run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate to say, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. Want your bed. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Sorry, I have watermelon stuck in my throat. <laughs> watermelon. 46 calories for a whole cup. That's unbelievable. You blew my mind with that one. Yes. Yeah, because I'm thinking high sugar. I know it's mostly water-based. Yes. But a cup of of basically a treat, a sweet treat at 46 calories, right. where can you go wrong? Where can you go wrong? I haven't physically been in your presence in three months. I know a lot of the fans. This is, we're back, we're baby. Back, baby. They thought I was flying back every week just to do Hey Babe. They said, how are you in California on Wednesday night and in the studio Thursday at 8 a.m.? Unbelievable. I, in New York. I said, let's, you know, I, I don't you know. You did that a couple times. Yes. I, I yeah. said, Spirit Airlines treats me nice. Um, <laughs> I just, by the way. You've been the, gone. Obviously, you're golden. You're bronzed. Yeah. You see, it's one of those things. I've been in LA so long that yeah, it might your skin just starts to. Because I'm I'm not a sun guy. I'm not a beach guy. No, you but know. I but you came in. That's the first thing you said. You said, "Oh, your skin changed." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have you don't have uh you just got a tan. No, you have you've settled into a tan. Yes, you've been living <laughs> right out west for months, yes. and now you have the yes. layers. You, you you're you're yeah. basically LA you're LA sun kissed like crazy now. Yeah, I've 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 turned into a Puerto Rican. Yeah, which has always been my dream. Look at look at me. I look like I I honestly look like I have a iron deficiency. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You look like a, you have scurvy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. You, you come in. You got bright. You, your color palette has changed. Everything's you changed. Got turquoise. You, 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 you I mean, you're very easy breezy. Easy breezy. Beautiful beaut cover girl. Cover girl. I just had um a speaking of tans. You ready for this? Just this morning, you know, I do my podcast, The Chrissy Chaos. Of course. I do it from my actual house, my actual living room where my family lives. I had a man on the show named John A. Light, John Gotti's henchman. John Gotti's, uh, one of his top hitmen, was telling me what my daughter feed away that he's killed 21 people and would, would quite often shoot people in the head and then have a cheeseburger and a pudding. And I asked him if he'd like a coffee from my Keurig machine. That's it. You let him right into the house. <laughs> yeah, let, right let him right to the house. And, right. and, and was he there for the? Was he yeah. there for your oh, daughter's yeah, yeah. birthday? We, we got a. We got a, Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was he? Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, wait. Well, how do you settle into a conversation with a man like that? How many years reformed is he? When was his last kill? He, he, we didn't ask him when his last, his last kill had to be, I, if I had to guess, I don't think he killed anyone after 9-11, because it was just a lie. Uh -huh. It I would be disrespectful. It, it would be disrespectful. Yeah. He's told us many times he's a proud patriot, so I don't know that he would, unless, you know, he was fighting in the war. Now, here he is. This is the man. Oh, very... I thought you were talking like an older guy. No, well. This guy looks like, like, like. I, I was not expecting this person. No. Why is every outfit, a uh, picture of him out in that outfit? Oh uh, well, I think that's that's he was that's when he was handcuffed. I think he was going to, to jail. Um, um, yeah, he was going to, to jail. I, these are jail photos, or right when he's walking into this jail. This man killed twenty one people. Uh, more, more, maybe more. I I don't know. He's killed quite a, a lot of people. Um, and he's actually fully Albanian. He's not Italian, but he, he was the hitman for the mob. Um, he shot between 30 to 40 people, beat about 100 people with a baseball bat, and killed six people. Okay. Later in life, A-Light publicly denounced the life of organized crime and became a motivational speaker and a writer. So he's a motivational speaker. I bet he did. Yeah. I mean, what, do you, what else choice do you have? You have to, at some point, denouncement has to come. You have to. You can't just not denounce. Yeah. You, you shot 40 people, killed six, and beat... Yeah. That many people, but you got, at one point you got to be like, guys, not for me. Well, here's what here's what's interesting, and I think we're going to do this for the fans on Hey Babe, and I think it's I think it's something I think it's something we'll do for the Patreon. Oh, you got oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, mean, I, 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 I John A Light. If you go to John I, A Light dot com, I well, just grew my balls back from the last time you were here, so, and now they're blown clear off. So again. what we're going to tell you, what I want to tell you, Sal, is what he told us, and we were thinking this would be a great birthday gift for you. Is John A Light actually signs baseball bats that he killed people no. with? No, you can yeah. So John how do you denounce? The use of the bat, but then sell it as memorabilia. Yes, yeah, sells it as memorabilia. So John A. Light signed. Who, who, what, wait, who? What type of person do you have to be to buy an autographed John A. Light bat? I, I mean, Probably was, worse than the now John A. Light himself. Well, he better make sure someone doesn't take that from him and beat him with it. Beat him with it. Well, yes. I mean, a John A. Light. Just know that it's just a portion of the proceeds <laughs> for the sale of the bats will be donated to a youth charity. What? <laughs> a portion? A portion. Oh, a portion of the do to, to a youth charity doesn't make it any better. Doesn't make it any Hey, listen, a portion of our peanut butter sales go to yopeanut.com, Saratoga Peanut Butter. I know. Go to so youth basically, charities. John A. Light and us are. Basically covering the same ground We're the right same now. Same guy. 
So they j- make for what they make for the ultimate souvenir. You can also Wait, choose to have John write a custom message by choosing the inscription feature. Oh. I'd like imagine, I'd like John to write. Look, <laughs> yes, John A. Like custom no, 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 this design. This is like OJ selling cop signing knives. Yeah, that's, like, that's what like, that is. Yeah, it's like o- he's signing it's like OJ isotonus. <laughs> yes. John A. Like custom design autographed baseball bats are the ultimate memorabilia for John A. Like. <laughs> <laughs> he has nothing else in the category. It's just the bat. Yes. These bats have been. By the way. Uh, hopefully he doesn't watch our podcast. Oh, I think Wait. he is. Because John he- A, like, can you scroll up a little bit? A, th- these bats have been customized, designed, and engraved, and then are individually hand-signed by John. They make for the ultimate souvenir for any John A. Light fan. Yeah. And those who are fascinated about what the mafia once was. I like that little caveat in there. Like, yeah. also, you don't have to be a fan of him, but if you no. if you're once fascinated with the mafia, that's what it is. You can choose. So this is all at johnalight.com. He also wrote a book about his time in prison and, and the mob. Two hundred dollars for this signed baseball bat, by the way. So so not not too steep of a price. And I'm just putting it out there. I think <laughs> I think that we should buy a John A. Light baseball bat and give it away to a lucky member of the Patreon when we make one. I, I, uh, <laughs> under normal circumstances, I would. Should we buy John A. Light by it right now with the company card? I mean, I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> do you want to just do it? Let's, do, let's buy do, the bat. Sal, what do you say? I, I know. How do we reward John A. Light? What do you mean? I mean, really? I mean, going guy, to he, youth- killed, he killed six people. He beat people with the bat. Yeah, but he went to prison for it, and now the rest of it goes to a youth charity. I know, but he he made a plea deal, right? He did make. He well, had to, he, how was he out of jail if he killed six people? I think it was a plea. Yeah, I think I think it was. You know, yeah, you talk to the feds and yeah. Let me ask you a question. Okay. When when you know when you caught him in, a, did you catch him in any tender moments? Like, what's he like? Like, we, uh, did you feel like you got a taste, a peek of the real John A. Light? And 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 and, yeah. and 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 then also, how is he functioning in society now when he's capable of that? Like, how how. I don't even understand. Like, even motivate. Who's hiring him to be a speaker? Like, hey, we got someone that's going to come in here. He's going to knock his socks off with his motivation. Right. But f- asterisk. Right. He also killed so many, yes. so many people. Yeah. Uh, suspend disbelief and just listen to ha- what he has to say now. Don't look at John A. Light and think of how he's brutally murdering all those people. Uh, refreshments post. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he'll knock your socks off with his words. He'll knock your head off with the signed baseball bats. <laughs> Go to johnalight.com. <laughs> so, so he, so he has said. He said quite often through the podcast episode that I did with him on, at my at the Chrissy Chaos Show. He said that. He said that that he now t- wants to tell kids and let kids of any want to get with any mafia into any mafia organized crime unit, whether it's Italian, Chinese, Russian, whatever, that it's not cool and that you shouldn't do it, and that eventually it. all the guys turn on each other, and that it's it's just not the way to go for the right. kids out there who who wake up and say, you know, what I'd love to be is an organized crime. But yeah. You- he did love- but he does love Takashi Six Nine. Thank you, Elmas Pip. He does love Takashi Six Nine. Right. He said it was one of his favorite musical artists. Who is a known? Who is? They're coming for us they're, right they're, now. Right. Feds, Feds are coming for us. Yeah. The choppers are here. Yes. I don't know if you heard that, but there's choppers circling above. You have on mafia glasses right now. I do. I think a little bit. Right. Those are uh. a little mafia-ish. Oh, I thought it was more like a uh, I don't know no, computer I programmer think, from 1982. No, but but that that's why they were those old school. Mafia. All right. Yeah I, I, yeah. I love the fact of a guy who's just decades as a mafia hitman. He's murdered people. He told you he'd murder people and get a cheeseburger. Yeah. But he's here to tell you today, kids. Yes. Not cool. Not cool. And you know what? Yeah. He's talked about murdering people and all that stuff, but he was always, he was very, like, politically correct. Like, T.T. Um, T. Jerry, who's a, who's a, who's a, who's a, uh, a character on the Chrissy Chaos show, who, who we would, we will one day actually be on. Hey, babe, we will get T.T. Jerry, who's someone from my life. It's uh, my girlfriend's um, transgender uncle who, who was in prison for many years. He will come on. We will in, in, in introduce he him. He was to almost hey, going to do it with me while you were away. Right. And then things felt, felt, some stuff fell through. His parole officer basically said he couldn't do it. That's basically what happened. <laughs> T.T. T. Jerry. Well, we're know, working now. We're putting in the proper paperwork. We're putting in the proper paperwork, truthfully, to get T.T. T. Jerry on the show. But he, T.T. T. Jerry was also on the episode with John A. Lett, and he's talking about killing people, John A. Lett, and this and that. But he was very respectful of T.T. He was like, you know, how does it feel, you know, being transgender? He wasn't calling him any slur or slang. He was like, my transgender community and all these right. things. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. Well, he's, he's got to be, he's a motivational speaker now. Right. So you can't, yeah. yeah. Right. So you have to be, you know, politically correct. Wow. Yeah. So it's interesting. And I'll tell you what, when he came in, he had a beautiful suit on, beautiful shoes, beautiful socks. He smelled amazing. 
He smelled, and I wanted to well ask kept. him what what John Gotti smelled like. But then I thought I could, I might get a baseball bat. Yeah, if I, told I don't think you start asking extra questions. Extra questions, but yeah. But wait, how is he living if he did a plea deal and got people arrested? Because he I, said I'm just going it, by the movies. I don't know that they all. We asked the same question. Pay the piper. Or? We asked a question. He said he doesn't. He doesn't look over his shoulder anymore because he said it's that part of it is kind of all done. He said everybody's became a rat. Everybody. He goes, I would never wear a wire. And I said, Well, you have on a wired lav mic. And he said, only for podcasting. I said, okay. That's what he so, thinks. Yeah, so, yeah. Little does he know. Yeah. Bring him out. Bring him out, yeah. <laughs> so he told us, though. You're untapped. <laughs> he said the mafia, it's changed so much that he doesn't really have to worry about it. Cut to probably today, John A. Light killed in the streets in Brooklyn. <laughs> By former mob how, associate. I wonder how he broaches that topic on like a first date. Or when it's getting a little serious, like it's our fourth, fifth date. Yeah. We've seen a couple of movies together. Right. We've we've we split a couple of checks. Right. He's liking this new young lady, right. and now he has to be like, "This is something I need to tell you about my past." Yes. I mean, and cool. she's like, get, "Let me let, let me guess. You filed for bankruptcy before?" And yes. he's like, "No." He, and then they're like, like well, "Criminal, you, but not that." Yeah. Yeah. No, but really, how do you do that? Like, and do you do that before you sleep with someone? Because if you let them know that afterward, and they're like, "I wouldn't have," it's a real trick. I don't know what the code of ethics is there i would pop me personally like yeah. when i was single i would always tell a woman that i was going on a date with hey i have a daughter i'm a co-parent so i also so i would lead with that that's similar then. that's so i yeah. think that if i was doing that then i also think if i also had said i'm also murdered people i would put that in the same breath just because i want them to know what they're getting into with yeah me. so i'm a co-parent yeah and john a likes a murderer yeah. Similar but different. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I just want to let you know before the apps, I have blood on my hands. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I have blood on my hands. Well, and he also did tell us on the podcast in the same thing. And I, I mean, I didn't correct him, but I, it only hit me after. I said, I said in the beginning of the podcast, I said, how you like in Brooklyn? There he goes, good. He goes, my girl lives around here. I said, oh, that's great. You know, whatever. And then 45 minutes later, I said, so what's your relationship status? He goes, I'm single. So I don't know what happened to his girlfriend in the 45 minutes on the podcast. He might have got a text update. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... So I don't know what happened, but in the in the midst of the forty five minutes, we had a girlfriend, and then we were single. And also, when we first started uh, messaging John A. Light to to get him onto the show, we were messaging an assistant by the name of Pasquale. And then very quickly, two weeks later, we got a text from a, a man named Felix who said, "I am now his new manager." So we don't know what happened to Pasquale. <laughs> 12. twelve years old, they started committing murders. What were you doing at twelve? Oh my God! At that point, Voltron was huge for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yes. I was committing sci-fi murders yeah. in my head. Because <laughs> when he said that to me, that's the first thing I thought of. I said, "Sal, I don't know if that's when Sal said he committed 12. his first murder. If it was twelve or fourteen. I couldn't remember. I, I was always very <laughs> impressed by thirteen. I had my own phone line that I paid for. Yes, yeah, yes. but he had killed. Yeah. So one of his six body counts was at twelve. Was it a? What is it? Was it an adult? Wait, I thought he was John. I thought he was murdering people for John Gotti. Who was he murdering? His friends. He he didn't say that he murdered anyone at twelve. So he was saying he was Albanian. So allegedly, the Italian mafia used to basically outsource their hits from the Albanian crews, and John was was like we do the, with tech. Exactly. Right. How we outsource. Right. right exactly. Right. We're not doing the dirty work here. We're outsourcing that. That's what the mafia would do. They would outsource to the Albanians. He actually gave me his business card, which has his phone number on it, an email. And hit, and the Albanian flag and a picture of him from prison. Wow! Oh yeah, here we go. So this is this is his that's his business card. And if you flip that around, <laughs> it's the Albanian flag. But what is it a business card for? I don't. That's what I wanted to get to. Is I didn't feel comfortable asking him that. But now that he's not here and I feel more safe, I I, I thought it was. You know, I think he's still in business. So he, it says here he's a keynote speaker, and that's the first bullet point, which means that's his most <laughs> that's his most prominent title. Yes. So first and foremost, he's now a keynote speaker. He's a keynote, which speaker. is actually different than a motivational speaker. Yeah. Like when you give a keynote for something yeah. like a Steve Jobs. Yes. Like what is he giving the keynote for? I don't know. And then you go to his website; it says "page not found." So so. <laughs> <laughs> is, second is movie consultant. That I could certainly see. And yeah. third is actor. And I could see that too. A lot of these guys that were mixed up in, in crime, they want authenticity in the movies, and they hire him and they give him stuff. I, I, it is insane to me that he is selling a bat that he autographs that he used to beat people with. Yes. 
Oh, and the card says Mafia Truth. Mafia. Yes, by the way, shout out. His, he does have a podcast called Mafia Truths, <laughs> um, and I believe he has a Patreon called Mafia Truths, and, a, and, and, and is johnalight.com. You can find out all the information. He actually was, Sal. You know, I know that he's, he's, he's had in his life murdered people and beat people up, but he actually was a very pleasant man to be around. He was very kind. <laughs> He was very kind, and, and my family was also there, and, you know, even, you know, my family was like, we just felt good around him. And I was like, yeah, I, I, it was very, very, very strange feeling. Is it, again, any stat on how long he's been reformed and or made that deal? Is it, are we talking 20 years? I think he was got out, yeah, let's, when did he get out of prison, pimp? Like, what, I, I don't know. Okay, 1995, it was arrested for illegal possession of a firearm. That happens. You don't know that you have to have the license That's, in every state. What can you do? After his release three years later, he, he earned an additional three months back in prison for <laughs> smuggling sperm donation kits for a fellow inmate who was trying to impregnate his wife, which is, in theory, a nice thing to do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what is a, a, a donation kit anyway, uh, outside of a cup? Yeah, what, yeah, let's... Let, he smuggled in... So, okay, so he was trying to give life at this point. He's trying to give life. Yeah. So, so, in other words... So, really, if you count that one he gave, he really only killed five. Exactly, because he yeah. gave one back. Yeah. John, if you're watching, this is all this is all tongue-in-cheek here, buddy. I just really wish you and everything you do the best. Yeah. Please don't Google me. And, yeah. uh, you know, like, yes. I, uh, I really... Uh, my job here is to entertain, and if you feel like I haven't entertained you, yes. uh, I really apologize, and I really want and no trouble whatsoever. Yes. With you and uh, you know, you know, I don't have much more to say about that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And and um, no, he was so he got three months more for smuggling smuggling sperm a sperm kit. kit, which seems a little ridiculous. It's like why not smuggle? So he left prison and then went back to visit the guy, like because he no. said he after his release three years later he earned an additional three months back in prison. For yes. smuggling sperm donation kits for a fellow inmate, yes. which means he was out of prison and yes. then going back to the prison yes. to smuggle in a sperm donation right. kit. Right, right. So exactly that also did. means that that guy had to produce the sperm, give it back to him yeah. so he can get it back to the lab. Right. Wow. Right. Wow. So it's kind of like you go, I just want to let you know, Sal, hmm. I would 100% do that for you. If yeah. You need a sperm kit smuggled in. Right. You talk to me. Right, right, right. You talk to me. I would always do that for you. Okay. And so when you were interviewing him, did your mind wander to that surreal place where you're like, yes, he might be 20 years away from this, but this man at one point has seen things that would real, that are chilling to me. And, and then you got like a little nervous or was he pleasant the whole time? And you guys, you wouldn't have known otherwise. He was so pleasant. You ever get in your own head when he was talking? No, like he was so pleasant and friendly to me that I, I, I w didn't know kind of like what was going on at times in the interview. Like I forgot what he even did and was <laughs> accused of. And I would forget questions, things to ask him. And then Homeless Pimp would jump in and just ask him. Like Homeless Pimp had really good questions. He asked him like, did he ever get, you know, did you know, because he was so used to like killing people and hurting people. Did he ever have to like shit or have diarrhea or vomit during a, during like a, a you know, a, a burglary or a murder. And he said, yes, he goes, there were some times where we were waiting for a guy to beat him with a bat and I really had to go. So I just, I crapped in the woods. Nature calls. And then we came back. He's like, I can imagine that. He goes, I left no fingerprints, but imagine they found my shit prints. I was like, <laughs> 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 oh man. Yeah. So it was very That's gotta be a terrible feeling. Like you're outside somebody's window yeah. waiting to go in and your stomach starts rumbling. Oh yeah. You're like, I gotta get this over with. Been there before, but we've all had to I mean, take poops on yeah, stage. I mean, as comics, we've all, we've also yeah. had to go to the bathroom during a murder and, uh, yeah. You ever talk face to face with a murderer for anybody or, or, or know somebody who then eventually went on to murder someone but hadn't yet then? You know, I feel like if I did know that person, I'd be able to call them up in my mind immediately, but nothing comes to mind. But I feel like I've had to know someone who's murdered someone. Yeah, like, I think it's about just that like, too. Even if I didn't realize it, I just mean like, well, that's it's like a law of averages. If I've met 10,000 people in my life, somebody, somebody has to, to kill somebody. I always think about that too. Like with all the people, like say you pass in New York City, I've had to have walked past someone who later on that Daily. day, who, who later on in that day or within those 24 hours was their last day on earth. They were oh, murdered. Oh yeah, what a or weird Or died thought, of a heart true. attack or something. Like that, the statistically- it's an impossibility that you haven't, if you grew up in a, a big city, walk past someone's last moments on earth. We, we, yeah, 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 yeah. We did a college together years ago, maybe like three years ago. You and I. Yeah. Me, you, and Roy Wood Jr. In, uh, um, it was in Indiana. 
I'm forgetting the name, but I remember it being in Indiana. I remember I walked out, and it was the, it was a full auditorium, right? Yes. It went back. Yes. And it went to the tops. Yes, I remember. It was the bleachers. Yep. I think they, there was at least 500, maybe maybe more, maybe 1,000 people there. And I remember right in the front row dead center was an old married couple. Mm -hmm. And I came out, and I immediately, like, they, like I was just doing a little crowd work, and I said, oh, you know, you know and they said we've been married like 50 years, and we're getting rebels. And I'm like, oh, like... I said, who do you think is going to, you know, pass away first? And the whole crowd was like, oh, oh. And I was like, well, what's the big deal? I mean, you have to think about it. Right. You know, and I was like, well, what's odds are that someone in this room is going to die soon. Like maybe. Right. And I brought up that stat and they just were They just had turned on me. Yeah. They weren't having it. That was like, apparently that's not funny to them. But because a lot of people don't want to face the truth where yeah. it's like the, the chances are. I said are someone here might die tonight. Yeah. And there was a couple who was. <laughs> I was the first minute I was on stage. I was like, look to your left and right. Someone's going to die tonight. It's a, how many people die every minute? You know, like. It's, but it's the truth. How many people do die every minute, pimp? Let's find out how many people die every minute. Death rate is 120 a minute, Sal. Wait, for where, though? For the world? 65 million a year die. 178,000 a day, 7,425 an hour, and 120 a minute in the United States? Oh, the world. I'm sorry, the world. Okay. Okay, so, wow. That's two people a second. Yeah. Forever. Forever. Just yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Since I told you that, 11 people have died. Yeah. It's crazy. Let's get a counter up on the that episode of just how many people yeah, are just dying. Get a death counter? Just, just, yeah, just yeah. do it the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, um, use it as uplifting, because if you last the whole episode, you made it. But, you know, and, uh, you know, Sal, but it's been... It's, <laughs> what do we got? Go ahead. Well, I know what percentage of Americans have murdered someone. Uh... According to the FBI, that 3.9 per 100,000, no more than 1% were done by serial killers. On average, there are 25 to 50 serial killers operating in the United States at any given time. Yeah, well, one of them is doing my podcast next week. His name's John A. Light. We, we interviewed him today, and he will be out next Tuesday. Um, uh, 0.0046% of Americans were murderers in 2013. Which is not a, which is, which is, I'm happy with that percentage. What, what is I'm that? Good with Out that. of a thousand people, what is that? You're that's two thousand. That's a hundredth, a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth of a percentage point. So is that like it's, one out of a thousand? No, I think it's one out of divide a, a point. A, divide one by a thousand. What is that? Was that? What does that yield you? One point oh 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 one, right? Or uh, point, point oh, oh one. one. No, that's one that's by one 100. out of 100. So one out of 1,000 would be 0.001. To so you're right. To place. Thousand. So, so one out of 5,000? Or 4,600, yeah. right? Something yeah, like right, that. right, yeah. right. Yeah. So one out of 4,000. So so, so at every, Yank, at every sold out Yankee game, there's 10 killers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 reduced capacity. Not, not to mention murderers row. Not, you're right. Yeah. Right. Reduced capacity, though, they only have 8,000. So thank God that's, that's the only positive. It's one COVID. and a half killers. At least you have less serial killers yeah. in the crowd for Yankee games. Yeah. That's a positive thing. Yeah. I thought about, I haven't thought about killing anybody. Well, I was going to ask you that. The a little same. hot under the collar. Maybe you, maybe you renege it 20 minutes later, but. I, I think in my mind, I've thought I could, you know, I'm, I'm so angry at this person, I could kill them. But I don't think I could ever intentionally no. follow through on a kill. No, never in a million years. I don't even think I could kill an animal. I couldn't kill, even if it was to eat. Like I couldn't, right, I wouldn't, you wouldn't be hunt. Able, I can't. I, I don't know. I, I understand like hunting's a thing, and I the people that want to do it and love doing it. I understand why you do it. I get it. I'm not here to say to hate on hunting. I just don't know. I could ever take a life. If anything, I know it's hypocritical to say because when we eat meat and chicken, we're just somebody else is we're just doing, doing the work. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, but but I, I can't kill you. You, have, you ever kill you ever, you ever cook a lobster that was live when you got it home? No, but I told you I put the crabs in. Oh, remember I told you the story where I put the crabs in. The the, the my father had me take get crabs from Staten Island. And he told me to put two knives in them and then rip their arms off and throw them in the boiling hot water. Uh huh. Yeah, so I don't I, remember you did that. Uh, I thought, yeah, I did that when I was a kid. It was very, you know, I, I, I was traumatized. I, uh, yeah, I mean, more than seven. What did you, you've killed lot. You've, I, well, I'll, I would no, I can't do it. I I've seen people put them in the pot. Alive? I've been I've been there. Why for do that. they put them in the pot alive? What's the point? I of think that? that's I think it's actually a quick death, maybe, but birth control. Um, birth control. I I think it's a quick death, or maybe like they it's fresher, sweeter meat. I don't know why they do it. Real Obviously, the the sooner it's dead before you're eating it, the freshest it is, right? Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah. I, I was I, with someone who put the friggin' metal through the through the through the um lobster, and there was like 
I thought they were the lobster was screaming. Have you have you heard this? No. I was like, Aah! I was like, oh shit, the lobster screaming. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. And I, I didn't even eat it. But apparently, it's like air being released or something from its like head. That. Yeah. Oh, here we go. While lobsters react to sudden stimulus, they're twitching their tails when placed in boiling water. The Institute suggests they do not have complex brains and allow them to process pain like humans and other animals do. But we'll never know. How do, they, how do we know that? Yeah, how do we know how the lobster feels? Yeah. I think, you know, like... What about a bug? Yeah. Does a bug feel pain? We've, t- you know... We've I, talked about it? No, we haven't talked about it. I've thought about it. And I do think they feel pain, but I don't think... I think like when a bug gets stepped on, it's almost like them being like evaporated. Like they don't, I think it must be so quick and powerful that they probably don't even feel it. It's got to be. It says they don't feel pain. They might feel irritation or can sense they're damaged, (laughs) but they cannot suffer because they don't have emotions. Right. How do we know they don't have emotions? How do we know they don't have brains? I don't think he has emotions. (laughs) That's crazy. So, when they say, don't swat at that bee, you're going to piss them off. You piss them off. That's bullshit. Bullshit. You know what else? It doesn't even know what pissed off is. No, you don't know what pissed off is. What about when you hit a wasp's nest? And yeah. they're all like, oh, they're going to they're gonna come after you now. They're angry. Right. They don't have emotions. They don't have... Ale- ale- but according to according to these scientists on Google, they don't know. Yeah. Nobody's really getting How, how do they know dogs are colorblind? What tests are we doing? Did you know that? No. You- I So I heard. I know that dogs are colorblind, and I know that the equivalent of their more birth control, yeah. the equivalent of their month. noses, yeah. like th- how much they can smell, would be if we had their noses. It would be if we could smell something from from New York City to San Francisco. Get the out of here! Google it. Google. That's crazy talk. Google it. Come sw- on. Good. That something. That, how could that be possible? Dogs, three hundred million olfactory receptors in their noses, compared to about six million in us. Uh, and the part of the dog's brain that is devoted to analyzing smells is 40 times greater than ours. Dogs have something called neophilia, which means they are attracted to new and interesting odors. I feel like I have that. I like a good yes, new course. smell. I got something for you right here. What I'm is that? Even ju- I can't believe this came up. What is it? I got, someone brought me this. It's a new scent. It's a okay. new scent. It's from um, Aesop, this company. Fables? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, here it is, babe. You ready for this? Okay. They, 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 Should I close my eyes? You don't have to. Okay. If you want, you if you think that closing your eyes will heighten your olfactories, yeah, do it. Oh uh, yeah, let's, the, let's I, hit that olfactory let's switch. Put on the olfactory. You know, the cranial olfactory is the second cranial nerve. Is it optic olfact? It goes uh, the way, the acronym is O O O to touch and feel a girl's vagina and hymen. Let's see how many of these I can get. Pim, pull up the twelve cranial nerves, please. O O O. You're o- kidding me. O- olfactory, optic, oculomotor, um, trochlear, trigeminal. Oh, this is from school, isn't it? Yes. O O O to touch. Uh, o O uh, trigeminal to touch. Oh, uh, abducens. Yes. To touch and feel facial. Yes. To touch and feel. Uh, One gr- more. Um, what's the second A? I'll skip it. ATM. At I'm I'm just forgetting it. I'm forgetting it. I'll come back. I can get this. O O O to touch and feel a girl. G- uh, glossopharyngeal. Is that right? Glossopharyngeal. Oh, to touch and feel a girl's vagina. Uh, vestibular. Yes. No, but, yeah. what was Glossopharyngeal, it? then vestibular. Vestibular. Yes. Vesti- right. Vestibular cochlear. Yes. Oh, to touch and feel I don't know anything you're saying right now. I don't know what it even means. And I forget, what is that last A? Hymen is hypoglossal. Everybody knows that. Of course. Uh, go to touch a girl's vagina and hymen. <laughs> I'm forgetting the two A's. Wait, I'm sorry. Whose acronym is this? These are the 12 this cranial isn't the, nerves. This isn't the textbook. I, no, 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 your teacher didn't tell you this acronym. This was taught to me by Dr. Futterman of NYIT. No, no. I swear to God, Dr. Dr. Benjamin Why would Futterman. he throw to touch a the girl's... The vagus vi- nerve. How could I forget the vagus, the Las Vegas because nerve? Because what happens in that nerve stays in that nerve. <laughs> we, listen to me. Accessory nerve. I let, it, I let us all down. I want to know something, though. What, what what a doctor was telling you that the acronym to remember all these like please excuse my dear Aunt Sally was yeah. touching girls' vaginas. That's the way to that's the to touch a girl's vagina and hymen. But, there but was, this was two thousand. He was saying so. it to the girls in the class too. Yeah, but everybody, you know, it's they, just the way we remembered it. But 
Is the v- Vegas one V A G U S? V A G U S. Is that have to do with vagina? Is that why he's saying vagina because it was inferring the vagina already, or is he just making a funny little quip of an acronym that was like what? I don't think even Futterman made it up. I think that's a thing amongst the field. Is that's the way students remi- remember? Is oh, oh oh to touch and feel a girl's vagina and hymen, uh, which seems outdated it and you se- probably can't do outdated. that now. Outdated. It seems wild. <laughs> yeah. I, Google I, I, Google cranial how to remember the cranial nerves. Oh my God! More than seven hundred million chickens are slaughtered just for Super Bowl <laughs> Sunday. Oh my God! <laughs> That's more than a co- the okay. Second largest day for food consumption in America. Oh my God! Sixty billion chickens raised each year. Sixty billion a year. So, in the grand scheme of things. I mean, eat John Alight hasn't killed as many people as pe- we've killed chickens. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? We all need to take a, a look at ourselves. I we think. all take a look at ourselves. You know, mm. I mean, if you can eat chicken, you can buy a bat. <laughs> From JohnAlight.com. <laughs> hey, Magic Spoon. Yeah. I love you. Order Magic Spoon, please. But here's Listen. a little tidbite you don't know. I've done 100 Magic Spoon heads, and they have yet to send me Spoon. Send us, send Sal Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is the best freaking cereal you've. Sal, I'm I buy you, it on my own. I got home from Los Angeles yesterday for three months. There was Magic Spoon waiting for me at the front door. I swear to Christ, whoa, whoa, peanut butter, cocoa, fruity pebbles, and their new flavor, honey grain. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Did you almost black out when you said honey grain? Yeah, I saw your eyes flicker because it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. It's amazing. It's got zero grams. It's of sh- cereal, and you eat it. And it's healthy. Yes. Right? Yes, it is. You're not going to get a cereal like this. And it's got 14 grams of protein. You eat cereal, you get jacked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You talk about net carbs, how about four? Four, baby. It's the summer, baby. You eat that cereal, you go right to the beach. Only 140 140 calories a serving, so you can stay that lean, mean, skinny bitch that you are. Well, I can't eat it because it has gluten. No, it's gluten-free. Eat it's got grains. It's got no grains. Well, I don't want to eat it. It's got soy. It's got no soy. I can't eat it. It's low to a carbs. No. Yes, it is low carbs. I'm not going to eat it. What about all the GMO? GMO free. Well, you know what I always wanted one day? I want to be friends with keto. Well, you get to be friends with keto because keto, it, uh, this this is keto friendly. <laughs> and they got, oh, dude, and by the way, the cinnamon flavor, the cinnamon flavor, here's how good the cinnamon flavor is, yeah. is, is I, I got, me and Pimp were eating the cinnamon flavor in Los Angeles. I bought this stuff by myself. I've they been said, buying it. I've been buying it. The cinnamon flavor was so good that I took one bite of it, spoonful, I threw it at my <laughs> neighbor. I hit him right off the head with the bowl of cereal because it was so good. Magicspoon.com slash hey babe. Listen to me. I'm telling you I cannot advocate for a product more. I love this cereal. Magicspoon.com slash hey babe. If you And then you use the promo code hey babe you save $5 off your first order. Five, and this cereal is expensive but it's so worth it. $5 off your first order. Magicspoon.com slash hey babe use the promo code hey babe Get $5 off your first order. I swear to Christ, <laughs> this cereal. I have never seen you more passionate, not even about a product, about anything in your life. I swear, listen to me, mark my words. If you are listening, people of the upper government, if you want to have <laughs> peace in the Middle East, drop boxes of Magic Spoon on the Gaza that is Strip. True. No problem. Oh, that's nice. That's I swear nice. to God. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It brings people together. It brings people together. Magicspoon.com slash hey babe. Use the promo code hey babe. Five dollars off. Go do it. Try the cinnamon cereal. It's amazing. Also, if I'm being honest, the rate for us just doubled, Magic Spoon. There it is. <laughs> yes, it has. Sal. Yeah, babe. You know this podcast is sponsored by? Better help. Wow. It's yeah. like you read my mind. Have you been talking to a therapist? No, but I've been reading the copy on the screen here because we got a promo to do. Oh, I thought that you were going to say that you were oh, no, talking to a therapist at BetterHelp. Oh, no, but it, I do. it's an online counseling thing where it's it's really all discreet, and you get to match up with someone. Yeah. Uh, they assess your needs, and you get a licensed professional therapist online. You could start communicating within 48 hours. Let me ask you this. The service is available for clients worldwide. You said today that you sent David Blaine a Twitter message from Italy. If you could go back in time, would instead... You would you, would you instead sign on to BetterHelp.com and talk to the therapist about the message you were about to send, David Blaine? Well, it was twelve eleven in the morning, and I was sitting on a terrace alone. I probably needed to speak with someone other than Blaine at that moment. And guess what? At twelve eleven in the morning, wherever you are, 
BetterHelp.com has a professional for you. That's right. They, got, they have over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. And the people, at, the, us here at Hey Babe, would like you to start living a happier life today. I really would. And honestly, we joke. We do joke. But we're coming out of a crazy year. Yeah. And I think a lot of people might be looking for help and don't know it or looking for help and don't even know where to go. And we're like handing you this because we have spoken to many people who it has done a great service for. So there you go. Your special offer for us. Yes. Hey, babe, listeners, right now, get Better 10% help. off your first month at betterhelp.com slash hey, babe. That's better, H E L P dot com slash hey, babe. 10% off your first month. Can't recommend it enough. I actually use it and it's been great. Um, I don't think that I think a lot of us don't even realize the mental health um, that we're under in today's world. And this really just helps out. So if you, you know, instead of DMing me or Sal, Looking for help and 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 you know we're not therapists. I would go to better. We're, oh, we're okay. Help. We're okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you need better help. Yeah. Yeah. Dot com slash hey babe, go do it and um and yeah and uh, ten percent off. Can't put a price on sanity. <laughs> so what, wow. what what's the smell? I want I'm sorry. you to close your eyes. Okay. And tell me where you think you are. Just all right. Awesome. So I he. He said, smell this. It's his new thing. I just got it. He had extra samples. Mm -hmm. So I opened it. I smelled it. I said, wow, this smells like something very familiar. Yeah, and then right. I placed it, and I was so happy. I did a little, like, okay. a little, like, kick. kick. Okay. okay, ready? Where are you right now? You smell that? You getting that? Put it, put it in again. I'm going to give you a, bi a bigger taste, a yeah. bigger smell? Yeah. What? Smell that, right? Oh, am I am I in church? Yes, you are. I'm in, in church. church. Is that incense? Yes, it is. It is frankincense. Frankincense, <laughs> which not to be confused with Frankenstein. That's right. I never really uh, smelled frankincense before. And in this in this thing here is cypress. Yeah. V v vetiver is that? Right? I can't read. V vetiver maybe cypress and freaking frankincense. Frank. That's what frankincense smells like. Yeah. So that you, you smells like church. It smells like church. And guess what? Frankincense, one of the original gifts. It was brought by right. the three wise men. Frankincense and myrrh from Impractical Myrrh, this Jokers. Is, this is what I'm telling you. So that's <laughs> what it smelled like the day of Jesus' birth. Yes, that's what Jesus' birth smells like. Wow, is, dude. It smells good. It made you me, nailed it. It made me... It, I know. I You're almost, talking about olfactories. Olfactories. I nailed it. I got a good olfactory. And you know who else has a great olfactory? And as, as all, all his cranial nerves are top-notch is Tom Brady. Give a quick shout-out. Oh, because you know what happened? They, got, they just won the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, 43, oldest guy in the NFL, this guy. <laughs> oldest guy in the NFL. And he won it in Tampa, which is the first time that's happened. Not to be reduced, though, Patrick Mahomes... Great, great. The Kansas City Chiefs, you gotta, you can't really say enough about them. As and you well. can't really even say Chiefs anymore. So let's just call them the Kansas City football team. Yeah, the Kansas City football team. <laughs> God so, bless them. Yeah. How about this? Five science back benefits of Frankincense. You ready? Let's do it as well as seven myths. Let's find out. Let's play the game. What's a myth? What's a fact? Now you close your eyes. You tell oh, me myth or fact. I saw the first thing. Okay. Was it may cause arthritis? May reduce arthritis. Oh, then I shouldn't have even looked. Yeah. Oh, may reduce? It's got anti- I need to, I need to try it because I crack my fingers and knuckles. You might know this as a guy who studied the body. Physical therapy. Yeah. Shout out Dr. Futterman. Shout out Dr. Futterman. Shout out Dr. Nutterman. Exactly, Dr. Shout, shout out nut butter, shout out peanut butter, shout out peanut butter and jelly, shout out salty sweet combination. Shout out yopeanut.com, shout out peanut butter, go check it out. That's proceeds, right. proceeds go to charity. Go to charity just like John A. Light. Okay. Yes. I crack my hands yeah. and fingers yes. 30 times a day. Easily. Am I going to get arthritis? Is that like something my mom told me to scare me? Is that an antiquated thing? I would say it's antiquated and a myth. A lot of people get air in their joints depending on the more, most likely place you'll get arthritis is your knees. Your knee. I, I, I crack them all day long. That, that, that. The, I go like this back and forth. I have a whole routine. Yeah. I wake up, I yeah. do it. I, the, the way, the way that they just crack when you just open up your hands was a tiny bit alarming, but not, I'm not, I'm not so scared. Here's what I'm telling you. And I swear to God, and I'm telling you seriously, mm -hmm. the way I just cracked it was like 5% of how they normally crack. It like, usually sounds like literally like some, like, like a, like. Like like firecrackers, right? How about this? Because because it's such it's such a good sound, good thing. Well, you're only going to crack your knuckles if you want to hear Sal's crack knuckles. Patreon.com when we make it. Put on, we're making a list. Make right? the list. Sal only crack his knuckles on the Patreon. The noise of cracking or popping in our joints is actually nitrogen bubbles bursting in our synovial fluid. Synovial fluid, which keeps the joints moving. Like it's like lube. 
Exactly. Like lubrication. Exactly. Right. It's, it's the way your joints get horny and ready for a night of fun. Says Dr. Clapper. Yes. According to Dr. Clapper, synovial fluid lubricates your joints like motor oil in the car's engine. That's what it is. Reducing friction and preserving our cartilage. Yeah. So is so, it bad or good? No, uh, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people say it's actually, at least at physical therapy school, they were saying there's actually benefits to cracking the knuckles and you should. So it kind of is in a bit an old wives tale, but you don't want to over crack them and overextend your fingers and joints because obviously that can cause issues on the ligaments. But what's over cracking, babe? I would crack them every time you feel like you you need to crack them, like things yeah. again stiff. I would crack them. Okay. I would crack them. I'd crack your knee. I'd, I'd be careful about cracking your neck. You crack your own neck. Don't have somebody else do it unless they're like a, a obviously a professional. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We are, can we go back to the frankincense um, myths and and facts? Oh, okay, go. Okay, yeah. Pull, pull pull up the whole thing. What's a myth? What's a fact? I want to see how many sound gets right because he really shit the bed on the beatitudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't go anywhere. I mean, because we're about to discuss frankincense <laughs> facts and myths, and, and that's why you guys come back week after week after week. <laughs> we okay. should title the episode that. It'll be a real killer. Frank <laughs> It'll be a real a light. This one. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Close your eyes. Frankincense may improve gut fu gut function. Is that a fact or is that a myth? Okay, consuming it or smelling it? Can you consume frankincense? I'm going to say fact. Fat. Yes, that's a fact. The resin appears particularly effective at reducing symptoms of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Oh, wow. So that's two major problems. Two major, major problems. Um, so they're saying fact. Improves asthma. Frankincense. No. False. 70% of participants reported improvements in symptoms such as shortness of breath and wheezing after receiving 300 milligrams of frankincense three times daily for six weeks. How do you receive frankincense? I don't know. How do you receive 300 milligrams of frankincense? I don't know how to receive 300 milligrams of frankincense, but I, I, I can already tell you this 100%. It's not as good as Sunday Scaries. Go to sundayscaries.com. Use the promo code. Hey, babe, that's better than frankincense. That's right. Um, can, here, let's, let's, tr let's, do, let's do one more. Did you go back? Okay. Frankincense maintains oral health. What do we think? I, I'm starting to realize that frankincense might be edible then. Yes, I think people eat it. It helps maintain oral health. Yes. In other words, it's going to strengthen my teeth and gums. High school students with gingivitis chewed a gum containing frankincense for two weeks. Both gums were more effective than a placebo at reducing gingivitis, so it reduces gingivitis. Why don't, why don't we know about all these facts about frankincense? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's something with, I would think, the big government and big brother trying to keep at, frankincense away After from this us. episode, so many more people that walk around on a daily basis are going to know so much more about frankincense than they did before they listened to this podcast. I mean, we get hundreds of thousands of listeners. Yes. Right? Yes. Think about that. They're all going away now armed with the frankincense knowledge, and then people talk. Yeah. Right? So those couple hundred thousand people might tell another 50,000 people. By the end of this week, yeah. there's going to be a quarter million more people walking around the world that have an education on frankincense that didn't before. I'm starting to realize, I'm starting to really start to think now, this thing fights so much, I think that's what Moderna's secret is. They put frankincense, frankincense in the vaccines. In the Moderns. Curing everybody. Yeah. That's what it is. All right, scroll down. Scroll down a little bit. Here we go. Helps prevent diabetes. Myth or fact? I feel like diabetes is such a bad thing that if if that helped prevent it, I would have heard it. I'm going to say myth. Myth is right. Small studies report that frankincense may help, blow, may help blow our blood sugar levels. However, recent high-quality studies found no effect. Here we go. Frankincense needs better PR. They, I mean, apple cider vinegar is doing big things these days. All this stuff with frankincense. Yes. I, my, you, you should name... You ever meet someone named Frankincense? I met somebody named Frank. Yeah, but not in sense. Not in sense. Not frankincense. Be great if you knew a guy named Frank Frankincense that just smelled like frankincense all the time. Wow. Do you think you'd like him or do you think you'd, you think you'd hold it against him? If he smelled like that, like what you just put in yeah. my nose, I think I'd like him because that smell, that, that, it, it, it smelled like church. It had, it, it was interesting. It was dual thing. It smelled like church, but it also smelled like Miami. I can't explain it. Yeah, I know what you like mean. A fun, like it smelled like the Delano in Miami. Yeah, the Delano. Or, or the Delano. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I like to put a little accent the, the, on it. little inflection, it keeps it fun. The, the Delano. The Delano. So, U.S. Social Security Administration public data, the first name frankincense was not present. It is possible the name you're searching for is less than five occurrences per year. So, out of 6,122,890 records, 
Wow. Not one name was frankincense. That means that there's either zero to five people. So less than five people out of six. So no one's named if frankincense. If you're listening to the show and you know someone named frankincense or your name is frankincense, please write to the show. How do they, how do they write to Hey Babe? Do we have an email they can email? They want to ask us questions? Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll pull that up. Hey Bay Pod at Gmail. If your name's Frankincense only, we will not open up any emails from people who don't cannot prove that the name are Frankincense. Better, better, better yet. Let's do this. Let's put Frankincense in the subject so we know who you are. If you, if you, if you, if you know, we know what you're writing it about. Yes. If you know someone named Frankincense, or if you know someone who knows someone named Frankincense, reach out. But also send us what you think the most unique name you've ever heard is. I met a guy. I'd like to know. I'd like to crowdsource unique names. I met a guy once. His name was So Birdo. Like So Birdo. Not Roberto. His name was So Birdo. So Birdo. So Birdo. S O B E R T O. He's like, hey, my name's So Birdo. I said, what do, you, what do you mean? Roberto? He goes, no, it's So Birdo. I was like, okay. So wow. Birdo. I never heard that one. And his nickname is So. Swear to God. Really just call him So. So. Yeah. Like, yeah, So. My grandpa's birth name was Norberto. Are you serious? I swear to Christ. Are you serious? I'm not joking. Uh, apparently, it's a Cuban name or a, a Hispanic name. Norberto. Yeah. I mean, he went by Tony, but like... Interesting. Yeah. That, wait a minute. What do you mean he just went by Tony? His name's Norberto. Since they, he was a kid, they didn't call him that. They called him Tony. I would have called him Bert. Yeah. I, it's, it's wild because I didn't find that out until like, I don't know, like maybe 15 years ago. Right. So it's like, I, I didn't know my grandpa's like... when I, it was. It's weird to know someone your entire life and then realize that their original name was not their name, especially when someone you love, like my grandpa. <laughs> like your grandpa's Yeah, yeah. It's actually a little like... It's, 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 it, it, it's shocking. Yeah. Also, I hadn't heard of the name Norberto before that. Right. How many people are named Norberto? Sunday Scaries. Did you try their ice cream? Oh, I loaded up on it. Dude, the Sunday Scaries is fantastic. It's excellent. It just calms me down. Yeah. And then I was just having it in the form of gunny, gummies or oil, like how they how I usually get it from yeah. them. But then they recently sent me a CBD ice cream. Yeah. You believe that? No, the C- it was fantastic. I'm telling you, the Sunday Scaries, at first, you know, we started reading ads, and we're like, oh, we'll do the reads. And then they sent a the product. That's my favorite CBD product I've ever taken in my life. I uh, I pop a, a little bit of Sunday Scaries, and then I watch Game of Thrones, and it makes it a little bit more palatable. I'll tell you one thing i ain't shook in 2021 no more i was shook in 2021 <laughs> and i'm not shook in 2021 no more you are because the sunday scaries because guess what if you go to go sunday, on if you go to sunday scaries.com with the promo code hey babe you get 25 percent off that's 25 percent off at sunday scaries.com promo code hey babe with your bad self <laughs> no Did you I, get didn't, shook? I didn't get shook in 2021 you didn't get shook in no, 2021 yet because you know why because you know why else and also shook could also be a good thing yeah and also i and also what's one thing i always forget when one thing i always forget is i always i always be forgetting to take my vitamins and the cbd gummies <laughs> well, are you the perfect forgetting to take i would take my take forget you don't it. be do i'm you? just gonna take my vitamins i take my vitamins every day well the cbd got Gummies are the perfect product to help you kick back and chill the fuck out because they mm. added vitamins B12 and D3 to get that extra boost of vitamin goodness in that ass <laughs> to give you the perfect blend <laughs> to make you get... more tolerable to your coworkers oh, and friends. CBD all up in that ass. All up in that ass. And if you vegan as a mother like me, <laughs> they got you too. They got vegan gummies called vegan ass. Yes, that's right. That's the version. name of the product. It's not us. It ain't us. And it's a guilt-free version of CBD you've been kindly hunting. Yeah, to help you forget about Becky's Showboat IG account. Yes. Man, they get salty up in this they thing. They get salty up in this. 25% off at sundayscaries.com with promo code Hey Babe. There's no better way to go to church than on a little CBD. <laughs> but hey, fellas, we're in the thick of winter and the storms are brewing. It looks like one to three inches are in the forecast when you trim that hibernation bush that's taking place in your pants. <laughs> Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs. Manscaped is here to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience, offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels. I'll, I'll tell you what, the lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, I'm being dead serious. It says the best hygiene tool for the modern man. They're a thousand percent right. I have that lawnmower 3.0. The, it's literally to the skin shave. I, I no nick, nothing. It's so, so, my balls right now look like Michael Jordan. They're, I'm telling you. Really? Yes. Your balls look like a six year old black man. Yes. Wow. From the lawnmower 3.0 championship, six rings, Michael Jordan. That's what my balls look like from the wow. lawnmower 3.0. 3.0. Now, let me tell you something. I wonder what happened to the people who, who had the 1.0 and the 2.0. I don't know what happened to them. Godspeed. You God need, if them. you have that and you love it, you got to know that the 3.0 is what you got, but even better, right? They have That's another thing called the crop preserver. 
Preserver, which is an <laughs> anti-chafing ball deodorant that make your balls smell nice and make you feel like your testes are walking in a winter wonderland. Oh, that's always fun. I that's love a winter wonderland. All you got to do is go to manscaped.com slash hey babe. You're going to get 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com slash hey babe. Oh, look at this. Unique and unusual baby names 2019. Girls, Tally. Okay. Kaylani. Rochella is a tough one. Rochella. My that's name's like, Rochella. Yeah, that's like Rochelle and Coachella. Yeah. <laughs> Trixie Bell. Trixie Bell. Dre. Dewey. Danian. Jatami. Jatami. <laughs> Jatami is. Jatami. Out of all of them, I could deal with Jatami. Yeah. I think Rochella's rough. Rochella. No is disrespect rough. if your name's Rochella. We appreciate your support. When I was younger, I had a babysitter. Uh, there were two twin girls, and uh, they both babysitted me and my sister, Roxanne and Rochelle. Roxanne and Rochelle. Yes. Did you have crushes on them? Uh, I think I was like you were. I was a little too young for that, but I think at one point I was like, "Oh, these are girls that wear nail polish and have breasts and wear like jewelry and stuff." Sure. So, yeah, God bless them, you know. But sure, yeah, Roxanne was a big name when I was younger. I don't hear it a lot any much longer, but Roxanne Shante, you know, Roxanne, Roxanne, I want to be your man. No. Uh, right. She was like a in the early hip hop community, like a little pioneer of of of, of hip hop. I like the name Roxanne. I do too, actually. I really do like the name Roxanne. I actually do too. Yeah, yeah. Roxanne. Noberto. Is it too much Roxanne? I like Roxanne. Roxanne De Stefano. So that's Noberto German. He was Norberto. Norberto. Almost like Norbert. Is Norbert a name? Is that something that Eddie Murphy did? It Norbert. Says the name derives from old Norbit. high German Norbert. Norberto. So Norbert with an O at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, Norberto. No, Norbit is what I'm thinking of, right? Northern means northern brightness. Okay. Northern okay. brightness. But it's saying it's a German name. Most things go back to German or Latin names. Okay. What can you do? Um, so, so you know, three months, haven't seen you. I got to be honest. Talk to me. I got an email I wanted to show you, too. Okay. Speaking about, speaking about unique names. It doesn't. Three months, even though we haven't physically seen each other in three months, I feel as almost like you haven't moved and I haven't moved. To me, you look like your hair, beard, everything looks like it is in the exact same place as when I left you. Yeah, I, it's probably longer. Yeah. I haven't moved since you left. <laughs> <laughs> I just was like, all right, be back. Let me know when you come back. Yeah. I just stay here. Yeah. I get brought food and... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I was just one of the, I, I don't know, I just had a moment where I was like, it feels like I never left, and I was wondering, maybe Sal's just been sitting there. No, yeah, i just been doing my thing. It feels like you've been gone a long time, but not. Yeah, Like, we're right back in the swing, great to have you back, all this and that, but you've been gone a really, really long time. I've been time. gone, I've never, the f longest I was ever out of New York, ever for anything, before this was two weeks, now I was gone for three months, it was one of those things where I- You didn't, you haven't come back once? Not one time. Really? Not one time. Do you feel, do you think you feel what it would feel like if you lived on the West Coast? I do. You settled in enough for that? I do feel like I embraced it on the West Coast. And it's not even a more about like West Coast, East Coast thing. Just for me, it very much stamped down that my home, like where I want to be is yeah. on, is in New York. Yeah. It is not a disrespectful statement towards LA, but cause I had, cause here's the thing is if I wasn't there with my family, it could be very easily be like, oh, I'm missing my family. But I had my right. girl and two so kids. You really did get the experience. I had my family with me. Every you had your own car, your own home. Yes. You went to work every day. You yes. found your local spots. Yes, we watched on the local TV, like everything. Do you think you'd feel differently if we weren't in a state of still shutdownness? Like, or do you think that you got what LA has to offer? You got your sun kissed skin. You did your thing. You, yeah. ate, your, you ate your burritos. I ate my and burritos. now you're home. And I, I, I feel like, yes, I got L.A. I understand, like, with things being shut down, whatever, but I... You're a New York kid. I'm just... I, the, there, there's a flow to New York and East Coast cities that I can't explain. It's almost like you walk outside in New York and you're just in a river and you're flowing in the river and you just... You're fine... New York is finding you, where L.A., I feel like you have to find it. Oh, that's and there's an interesting... No, there's no flow. It's like you walk... You walk to it. It's like it, they're like beautiful lakes that just you're there and you got to know where to go. And then you walk to the thing and then you stop because there's a freeway there. And, uh, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, there, there's just you can't walk anymore where New York is just like you just keep finding more things to do. I, I felt yeah. very isolated and alone in L.A. And I had my whole family there with me. So wow. it, was, it was actually a point. It was a thing. It was a weird thing that was happening. I was like, oh, I understand now why some of our friends who go out there who are from New York 
get in really bad shape, get on drugs. Maybe even some of them hurt themselves in, in entertainment. Because I'm like, it, it, you really start to like, the walls close in on you a little bit. At least they did for me. I heard there's like a, a year or a, between a year and two when people move to another state or other, that it takes that long to acclimate and come out on the other side of it. Maybe. Because like Joe maybe. Joe from my show, Gatto, moved to LA one time and so did Brian Quinn. And Joe was going to come home. He hated it after like six months. Where did he move? To LA. To, to LA. West, West Bolton moved to West Hollywood. Wow. And uh, I was like, um, you should just, you got to give it some more time. And then he gave it like another like six months or whatever. And then he came out of the under under and really, really liked it. He he's wanted up like an LA. But, yeah, but okay. he went out there alone alone himself just him yeah see that's the thing is is i i i don't know like that's tough with the fan i just was like i would literally new I was friends like, like i was watching i was watching youtube accounts and instagram accounts that were just about new york i was watching live streams of people walking in new york there's this kid on youtube called action kid i mentioned mama i've been mentioning him because i was literally every day just sit and watch i would sit and watch his youtube because all he was doing is walking with the camera on a book bag through new york just talking to people and i was like I would rather do that. Action than Kid? His name is Action Kid on but, YouTube. But what does he do? He just walks around. He has a Patreon too. But uh, he, uh, <laughs> is, it, is it like slice of life? Is it like, is he interviewing New Yorkers? No, he just walks through the neighborhoods. Is it just like a live stream? Yeah. Like right now, if you just look, well, th yeah, th yeah, go to Greenwich Village. I mean, well, where just, did you even find this child? I just put in YouTube. Oh, this, I, this I just man? put in YouTube, I miss New York. And you put in fun. YouTube, I Miss New York, an <laughs> action kid came up? Yeah, this kid popped up. See, I watched this exact one, and I started oh, to cry a little oh bit. Oh, my God, we walked that street every day. It's down the block from the comedy yeah, cellar. Yeah. I, I remember I was watching this exact one tearing up. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, oh, my God, please make a left. Please make is a that, left, because I want to see the comedy cellar. Is that cellar. subway station open? Right there? That Fort Street one right outside the theater? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah. but watching this from it's, L.A., it, and it, I, I was, it was a beautiful home. Beautiful. I met beautiful people. You know, wait. I'm sorry. What is happening here? Nothing. I was just watching it, weeping. So it's just is this a virtual <laughs> a virtual tour? Yeah, he just walks around and does this. But to me, for somebody like me, this was huge for me because I was see I was <gasps> seeing New York. Oh, he gives you the the street he's gonna walk. Yes. Oh, what a unique idea. Yes. So I was just sitting there watching this, and then yeah, he went yeah. Down look, this it's like with yeah, it's like literally. It's like with I was like, day. oh, this could be me. And, 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 you know. Wait, this person is a YouTube millionaire? I don't know if he's a YouTube mil. Does, is it? Yeah. Yeah, he makes money. Yeah, action kid. Yeah. This is what he does. How do you know that? How do you know his financials? I mean, well, you just figure it out. I mean, it, it is such a unique idea, especially if you want to, like, be like, get a taste of what a city might be like before yes. you go there or something. I do that with all cities. Like, after, I think we talked about this after I finished um, the show. Um, what's the one with Claire Danes with the terrorists? Uh, Homeland. Homeland. I did. Well, I know we spoke about this already. I did a whole. I watched a whole YouTube video of just a guy walking around Islamabad, Pakistan. I just want to see what Islamabad looked like. <laughs> and it was fantastic. So Islamabad has their own action kid. Islamabad has their own action. Go to go to walk around Islamabad, Islamabad, Pakistan. Yeah, walk in the streets of 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 uh, Pakistan or Islamabad. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I don't know if it was this guy. Oh, that's Fox News. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. different when stuff's cut, but when you're just walking down the street, no, you really get a sense it of it. It was very peaceful to watch it just walk and hear the sounds, and, you know, it was it, it felt like it just... So, and then, you know, so now I'm happy to be home, and, um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. And, oh, and, and by the way, a little cherry on top at the end, um, and this is all true. This was, this was filmed by the homeless pimp. The, set through, the final week of my stay, the final week of my stay at this house that I've been at three months... Chaz Pumentary, Sonny from a Bronx Tale, and his entire family knocked on the door and stayed at my house for a week and occupied two of the four bedrooms in the home. <laughs> did you not know they were coming? We did not. We were we were told we were told short notice that 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 Chaz and the family would be coming. So we we got an air mattress and we made it work. Who who was the air mattress for? For Chaz's children. Oh wow! Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. So we got it. Because it wasn't enough. But doesn't the fact that you had to get an air mattress mean that you didn't have the room for them? Well, yeah, because because we had two beds. We had we had one room that had two beds, which was the kids' room, my stepson and my daughter. Then the room downstairs was, was for the homeless pimp. Then we had a bedroom. Chaz has, oh, they got to be older children, no? Ch older children. Yeah. Okay. So 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 they, and uh, but only his daughter showed up, not his son. So we prepared an air mattress for them in their master bedroom. Um, uh, but, but then she, 
as soon as Homeless Pimp left, we washed the sheets quickly, and his daughter went and slept downstairs because Chaz has got a big snoring problem. Oh, maybe yeah. he has maybe he has sleep apnea. I asked him. He said, "No way." He said, "They scope me." They scope. Wait, <laughs> so it was like a, it was basically like a sitcom. It was you had sitcom. two crazy families living yeah. under one roof in yeah. L.A. Yeah. Fish out of water. Fish out of water. Chaz times lost his, two. Chaz left his wallet in an Uber one day, so we had to go on a whole adventure to find his wallet. <laughs> Meet the Uber driver in in Reseda, California. We drove in a parking lot. It was sketchy. Didn't you have work? I Chaz needed his wallet, so I had to show up late to the set. <laughs> Oh, were you like? Are you like his his right hand when he's when you're around? Is I would, he, I would are call, you like his consigliere? I'm his, I'm Chrissy consigliere. <laughs> okay. Yes. How did you track down the Uber driver? Well, because Chaz's wife uh, is access to his Uber account, so we figured out where he was, and we uh, figured out uh, his number. Called him, and the guy, you know, the Uber driver was like, um, uh, you know, I have your wallet, but you got to meet me. I'm working. I'm working, so you got to meet me here. And Chad was like, what if I just pay you to drive back to me? I'll give you three times your rate. He goes, no, nah, I can't. I'm at work. He goes, don't you work driving a fucking Uber? He's like, <laughs> just drive the Uber to me, and I'll give you a lot of cash. If right. you make me go meet you, I'm not going to give you anything. He's like, I'm working. You got to meet me in the supermarket in Missouri. Right. So, so it was interesting. So it was interesting that. Then we lost the key to the house. And it was underneath the car. So me, Chaz, Chaz's family, my entire family were on our hands and knees looking for a key while my six-year-old daughter uh, was shining a light with our cell phones to try to find a key. Oh, in the evening one night someone dropped a key. In the evening we couldn't find anything. It took us about an hour to find the key. We finally found the key. We had no way to get into the house. How did you, um, how did scheduling go with two different families? Were you operating independently under the same roof or was there uh, was there a bathroom schedule that had to be worked out? And also, with the normal time that you're going to bed and waking up, if that didn't sync up, did they watch television in their room? Was did someone stay in the living room and someone retired to bed? Was someone up bright and early when other people were still trying, still trying to sleep? T take me through the uh, the minute to minute semantics of sharing a home with a full another family unexpectedly. Good question. <laughs> so here's what happened: is Chaz and his family came and beautiful people we are very close with them love them so much they they came they came to the house our then what happened was is our schedule me and my family schedule we more adapted to them because they're fun and full of life and we had been there for three months we kind of needed that zap so what wound up happening was is i would go to work and then while i was at work Chaz and, 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 and his wife Gianna, his lovely wife Gianna, would take my family around and do things with them. Oh, then when cool. I would get home, I would then join. And the only thing that would happen is I would, I would drive the car instead of Chaz. So I would drive my family around with Chaz's family in the car. All in one car? We fit all in one car. We got an Infiniti uh, XQ80. So it, it's got. Shout out Infiniti? Shout out Infiniti. So it, we could fit Shout seven out people. XQ80. We could fit seven people. So that's just what we had. Is seven people when when homeless pimp wasn't there. And where did you go? You were you like a, a little like a tour bus? Would you yeah, where, where we would you around. go? We drove through the hills. We went to like sightseeing. Yes, we like did. just everyone looking out of the windows of the car while you drove. Yeah, well, like I drove, a pleasant drive. Like a pleasant drive. Homeless pimp and 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 Chaz went and found the first theater that Chaz did a one man show at Bronx Tale at his old apartment from L.A. He walked into his old or he knocked on the apartment door of his old apartment where he used to live and he was like, "Hey, it's me." And they were like, "We don't know who you are. We'll call the police." Um, you know, it was things. like that. Did you ever do a thing where, like, you know, you can't be going on tours and strolls and active 24-7 for that whole week? Was there ever a time where you just, like, plopped down on the couch and you looked to the left and it was Chaz's wife and you guys both watched, like, Judge Judy together? Well, no, we would plop down and, and have, Chaz's like, ritual at the end of the night. Chips on your shirt and stuff. Well, we'd, and eat, we'd, eat, we'd, eat, we'd eat Ben & Jerry's ice cream or, or tiramisu and we'd watch F1 Drive to Survive on Netflix. About the Grand Prix and the and the F one. Oh, so you had driving. like a like a little routine together. Yeah, yeah. Like you started watching a show together. Yes, and Chaz frequently would call it One F. He would say, "Hey, put on One F on Netflix." I was like, "Oh, F one." He goes, "Yeah." <laughs> 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 yeah. He was also Chaz Palmentier was also at my daughter's birthday. And Your daughter's gave, sixth birthday. Sixth birthday, and he gave her two hundred dollars cash. Wow. And he put it in, in, her, in her little... Oh, wow. Yeah. Very Chaz yeah, in he, my head. And then my daughter, because she's six, tried to feed it to her American Girl doll. So we had to then take the $100 and then put it in... Oh, I would have looked... If I was her, how great would it have been if she like took the 200s and would just like 
ripped <laughs> ripped it right in front of me. Like I don't I don't need your money. I don't need your money. I got an America girl. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. He, so it you know was, what this gets me right here? Maybe one outfit for this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Truthfully. Have you been to the American Girl doll store? Oh my god! Hit me with a two hundred. I can't even buy a goddamn slipper for this. I literally got hit for three hundred dollars in about five minutes at American. It just got yeah. hit. Yeah. Hard. By the way, the psychos at America, the American Girl doll place. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I get it. As a kid, it's someone, it's a billion dollar idea. Yeah. Oh yeah. But basically, these poor parents are bringing their kids to blaze, basically to hang out with dolls. But right. then the place operates like they're real people. Oh yeah. Like you got to buy the doll a sand. Which isn't that true? A hundred percent. Like they, you eat breakfast with the doll, they bring out food for the doll, they do yeah. the doll's hair and stuff. You're like paying for like an extra plus one. It's a doll. When we got on the plane yesterday with my entire family going back, shout out Delta. I, you know, you guys, it's great, great plane, great airplane, airline, but it's enough's enough. You got to start serving food now. I think, you know, I, the, the flight attendants can walk up and down the aisles. Let's, right. We, we need to start serving the food. You need again. sustenance. We need to start doing this. I can't, I can't survive on the biscotti cookies. Right. Even though they're decent. They're decent. But I can't, but we got to start serving food. Let's get, let's grow up now. Okay? Yeah. It, let's grow up. You remember when food was just like, in, a coach ticket would get you like food, drink, yeah, everything? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing. But I went to our seats and, you know, we were 30, 33A, 33B. 32A, 32B. So I was sitting next to my daughter and Delilah when I was putting the bags up. She had the American Girl doll in my seat. I said, baby, got to move the American. She goes, but this is where Kiara is sitting. I said, no, that's where daddy's sitting. And she was like, why can't you sit there? And there was a, a, a seat across the aisle. I said, because that's someone else's seat. She's like, but they're not sitting there. I said, Delilah, you have to move the doll. That's my seat. And she was like, I'm not going to move the doll. And I was like, Delilah, either you move Kiara yeah. right now Move her and you hold her Not on the lie, like yeah, 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 mm. and you hold her on the lap, or mm. you hold her on the lap, or you, or I'm gonna put her up in the storage bin. Yeah. I'm gonna put her up in the storage bin, you know, um, uh, uh, above the head. She goes, okay, fine. Gets up, takes Kiara, puts Kiara in the seat across the aisle, puts a seatbelt on her, goes, sits down, looks out the window. I sit down, put my seatbelt on. Jasmine, my girl, turns around. She goes, just don't move. the. If nobody sits there, just let the doll sit there. I said, that's not somebody's seat. And she goes, <laughs> and, and she goes, just let the doll sit there. So literally nobody ever showed up to that seat. The entire flight, Kiara had her own seat. Kiara had her own seat. And we were making jokes. They the got flight attendant, some racket. She was, I, was like, I was like, hey, her tray table's down. Can somebody tell her to her tray table up? I was like, somebody, I was like, I'm not sure that she put her phone on airplane mode. She has a, I, said, I said to the flight the attendant, hits. I said, she, Kiara has a koala bear. Is that a pet therapy animal? I mean, what's going on? But sat there the whole time. And then Delilah, every time that seatbelt would get up, Delilah would, Delilah would get and sit and attend to Kiara's needs, took Kiara to the bathroom she said Kiara has to go to the bathroom I said the seatbelt signs on I said but dad she's got to go I said there's turbulence she said she's got to go she's got to so go so we took her to the bathroom so the people at American Girl your the, the 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 story that you're weaving here is just affecting millions of parents and you need to be stopped I think there's you yeah. cannot have these children thinking these these uh, these kids need to be attended to like actual siblings yes no I can't and now it's to the point where my mom got her an American Girl doll her mom, her grandmother got an American Girl doll. And when we got home, there, were, there was an American Girl doll in the house that we had already shipped. So now my daughter thinks any house she goes to, she's going to get a surprise American Girl doll. So it's Also, a little antiquated in the fact that it's just American and just girls. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it should be a global yeah. doll. Yeah, well, my daughter, when we, were in this the point. when we were in the car, she said, I'm going to make an American boy doll when I grow up. I said, you're going to have to make it a lot quicker <laughs> because that... <laughs> That thing is going. That idea is probably already in progress. I said you're only six years old, hon. But 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 the American Girl doll it made her happy. Um, it was great, great birthday gift for her. Um, Kiara, who's from Australia, um, you know, got a koala bear, got a book bag. I, I it's a, it's a pretty penny, right? And the coronavirus shut down three three American Girl stores. Wow, American Girl so stores. Right. Wow. I mean, no okay. one is. No one was above. No one was above. The risk of the pandemic. Even American Girl shut down three stores. Even Amer yeah, because and they're we, charging you money for an inanimate object. Because how do you keep? Because how do you keep the American Girl dolls in the store? How do you keep them six feet apart? It's very tough. Yeah, they're flying off the shelves. Yeah, what happens to the all the American Girl dolls that that close down? Like, what do they do with those? Is it like when? <laughs> is it like when like when like the Sonics? Like yeah. the Supersonics don't win the championship, but they printed all the shirts. Right. And then you see over in like Africa. In Africa, everyone's wearing like it's, it's just like tons of American girl dolls over in Africa. That, or maybe they were put up for adoption. I don't know. I don't know what happens to the American girl dolls, but also American girl dolls, of course, made in China. Um, well, let me ask you this, though. Can I ask you this? Sure. What happened with David Blaine? 
gave it. Do we have time? No, we don't. That's the end of the show. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Hey Babe. <laughs> Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey. I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I didn't know. I didn't know. And it's one of those things where, like, my dad, like, he keeps. I keep telling him, like, Dad, like, you need to, like, really get, like, your health in order. Like, you're 73 years old now. And he's like, yeah, and when I'm walking, I feel pain all over my body. I got chest pain. I got pain in my head. And I'm like, I, I honestly sound like I was a friend. Like, I don't know what else to tell my dad. Like, I'm what sorry. can I tell my dad to, like, help him? I feel like it just comes on late. Uh and it's quick, and it, we're never expecting it. Did you tell them to uh, subscribe to the Hey Babe Clips page on YouTube and to turn on notifications and then like and comment on the page? No. You might want to do that it's, if you haven't explored that option yet. And that's one of those things where, like, my doc, like his doctor is like, oh, he's got all the answers. And I'm like, did you even ask him to like and subscribe and click notifications on the Hey Babe Clips page? Like, that's probably why he has chest pain. Yeah. And I didn't even yeah. think of that. Yeah. Well, doctors are going to do that, right? They're yeah. not a lot of a lot of doctors don't have really good bedside manner. Yeah. They're going to tell you what's in a textbook, but they're not going to tell you about yeah. real world stuff. Well I, well, I was looking I was looking through his through his uh through his medicines the other day and he didn't even have he didn't even he wasn't even subscribed to the No Pressure Network on YouTube watching Hey Babe on Thursdays and 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 Taste Buds on Monday. I said, "Dad, what are Mondays for?" He said, "Penicillin." I said, "And the buds." I said, "What are Thursdays for?" He said, my heart medication. And he didn't I said, know and the, the babes. babes. He didn't know and then once I told him that, he got a little bit better. But I yeah. think not subscribing, uh, not subscribing, liking, and setting notifications to the Hey Babes Clips page could be the difference maker. I think that's why his health's plummeting. 